as an animator who absolutely mm -hmm. hated using Blender when I first started, to not having it be my favorite animation tool, here are a few things I wish I knew and I knew to avoid when I first started. Number one is using Simplify. Simplify is the easiest way to get your scene to run faster with a single click of a button. You want to make sure your viewport is set to the lowest it can be. When you're animating and your render, you can leave that at number six. Two is not setting playback to drop frames and audio sync. If your scene isn't running at 24 frames per second, which regardless of software with most complex rigs, it won't be, you won't be able to see the pacing of your animation unless you play blast. And so you'll be reliant on play blasting. To save you time, you can change the playback to drop frames. And so you'll see the correct timing and correct pacing of your shot when you press play, but you won't see every single frame. You can still see every single frame when you scrub through the timeline, but when you press play, it'll prioritize the pacing and the timing of the animation over showing every single frame. Three is not using the waveform. Now, because it's not built into the timeline, most people don't know that you can use the video sequencer to showcase your waveform. And when you have a reference in, or if you're animating to uh, an audio clip, it's really helpful to see the waveforms. And so you can actually use the video sequencer to display your waveform. Four, not saving your workspace preferences and redoing it every single time. If you have a certain layout that you love animating in or working in in Blender, and every time you reopen it, you have to remake it, just take the time to do it once and then save it. That way, every time you reopen Blender, you can have your favorite layout ready for you without you having to remake it every single time. And if you work in a studio or you open files of other people, this is an issue I had when I was working at a studio, I would open someone else's file and the layout would change to their file. There's a way to fix this though. You just go to preference and check load UI. That way, every time you open a new file by somebody else, you keep your own layout. Five is not using free add-ons to speed up your workflow. Add-ons like Dynamic Parent are a much faster and less confusing way to create constraints. It adds on off keys automatically so you don't accidentally have the constraint animating over multiple frames. Animate is also another amazing one where you can make global changes to your entire animation. It works kind of like an animation layer, but unfortunately Animate doesn't support past Blender 3.6. That being said, the creator of Animate is actually working with Blender to implement the tools from Animate into vanilla Blender. So it's still good to use it with Blender 3.6 and below to learn the tools and then Blender 4 and above, they'll start implementing those tools into vanilla Blender so you'll know how to use them. If you want, there are also really good paid add-ons you can get for Blender as well. One is Play Blast, Blender's vanilla Play Blast system leaves a lot to desire. So this add-on makes it a lot easier and a lot faster for you to play Blast shots. There's also Blast Frames uh, set of add-ons, the animation kit, a lot of cool tools in there. And of course, can't forget about the animation layers add-on. This is just fantastic. It's exactly like Maya's animation layers, except better and more features with Smart Bake and everything you could ask for. It's a fantastic tool and I would recommend any animator in Blender to purchase the animation layers add-on. Six is not taking advantage of the 3D cursor because it's not familiar to you. If you're coming from Maya and you're not familiar with the 3D cursor, you probably don't know how versatile it is and how useful it can be. You can use it to bring stuff into the scene in a specific location. You can use it as a snapping tool to snap things to a specific location. You can rotate objects from a temporary pivot point and a ton more stuff. Seven, the annotate tool. If you're one of those animators who likes to draw things on the screen and track things, annotate tool can be super helpful. Instead of exporting your shots into sync sketch, and then drawing your notes and then exporting it and going through that whole process, you can just use the annotate tool and do it all in Blender. Eight, not using passepartout and grid lines for composition. When you're setting up your scene, they can be very helpful to find an appealing framing and help build a good composition for your shots. Number nine, not setting viewport overlays correctly so that it only shows motion paths and the things you really need and hides the rest. By default, the overlays are set to show the 3D cursor, bones, relationship lines, grid, and all these other things. So normally, we just turn those off altogether to get a clean view. However, it's worth taking the time to turn off everything except motion paths and annotations if you have any, so that you can use those in the camera view to track arcs and make drawovers to camera. Doing this, you don't really need to toggle anything on or off. You just set it up once and then you're 
good to go for any shot. Number 10, not using the normalize button in the graph editor. The normalize button forces all your values to fit within negative one and one in the graph editor for all your graphs. It doesn't actually change the value of the keyframe. For example, if you translate Y is 86, it's not gonna change the value to one or negative one, but in the viewport, it visually shows it to you as one to negative one. This helps you compare the size of multiple curves to know how much each is dialed in. This is particularly helpful when you have one curve nicely framed in a view, then you click on a different channel, and without normalize, you probably have to scale out, go up or down to find this new curve, and it's a bit of a hassle. But with normalize, you don't need to do this because as long as you have the view calibrated to see everything between one and negative one, all your curves will fit nicely in the view. In animation, you usually care about the shape of the curve, not the numerical value of every single key. So having normalize on where you can see all your curves within one view and you can visually see everything and how everything is working out, it will seriously speed up your workflow. And finally, the biggest mistake beginner and seasoned animators make when transitioning to Blender is that they don't take the time to fully learn and understand all the wonderful animation tools Blender has to offer. When I first started using Blender, it was during the production of Maya and the Three, where we were told to do the famous donut tutorial to get familiar with Blender. But the problem is that it's a modeling tutorial. It's not an animation tutorial. There weren't any good animation resources for Blender at the time. So us newbies were learning through trial and error and by watching modeling tutorials. And by bugging more experienced uh, artists at the studio. It was really, really frustrating and it contributed to the reason of why I hated Blender when I first started working because I was fighting all the settings and I didn't know about most of the awesome animation tools that Blender actually offers. So I had this Maya mindset going into it and I was like, it's not Maya, I hate it and because I didn't know any better. If you're serious about being an animator and want to maximize your productivity in Blender, I highly suggest learning all the animation tools that Blender has to offer. This is something we cover in our Blender Basics course, which is included in our Ultimate Animation course. It comes for free in the Ultimate Animation course once you purchase that. But in that course, there's 40 video lessons with PDF handbooks where we talk about all the tools that Blender has and how to use them. This is a course you can finish in under a week, and by the end of it, you'll be super proficient in Blender's animation tools. Now, Blender 4 recently came out, and with it, a ton of new animation features and updates. So what you can do is watch this video right here to get caught up.